morning, guys. Um, welcome to the uh, Works of the Next webinar with Actuate. Um, gun detection, um, people counting and loitering, um, and a couple other cool features. Um, so I'm here with Sonny uh, and Ben um, from Actuate, and they're going to take us through the uh, product and then give us a demo so we can ask a bunch of questions. Um, Sonny, feel free to take uh it away. Yeah, great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for uh, attending our webinar. Uh, my name is Sonny Tai. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Actuate. I'm joined here by my co-founder and chief technology officer, Ben Geomech. So we are a computer vision company, and we build AI software that enables existing security cameras to automatically identify public safety threats, such as gun threats, intruders, loiterers, and even more recently, things like social distancing, tra social distancing transgressions, um, mask wearing and um, building occupancy mapping. So just to briefly introduce my colleague here with me today, uh, my co-founder Ben Geomech was previously an AI program manager at Microsoft prior to starting Actuate. He brings a deep wall of data science and AI expertise and he'll lead the Q&A and demo session later on. Uh, personally, my background is I spent 10 years in the United States Marine Corps, uh, got out as a captain before going to business school and worked in strategy and operations for a major management consulting firm um, before starting Actuate. And the reason why I started Actuate is actually uh, stemming from our personal upbringing in South Africa. South Africa has one of the worst rates of gun violence in the entire world. I've had a lifelong passion about this. And one of our close family friends was actually fatally shot in their own home uh, due to a home intrusion. So uh, yeah, we have a company that's deeply devoted to um, the mission of public safety and security. And that's why we started building this company about two and a half years ago. Dan Kopchik is actually not with us here today. He's um, working with another customer. So I'll just gloss over his profile. But if you'd like to reach out to him, he provides a deep wealth of knowledge, deep wealth of knowledge and expertise on how um, existing security industry technologies can address end user needs. And I can provide his information as well. So let's dive into the product, huh? as you might have imagine most organizations across the country have security camera coverage, but most of these cameras are really deployed in a very forensic way, which means that footage is only reviewed after an incident has already occurred in an effort to retroactively catch the perpetrator. Even for organizations that actively monitor the security camera feeds, either through an internal or outsourced SOC, it's really impossible for a small number of camera analysts to monitor hundreds or even thousands of feeds at the same time and that's even before you account for a human factor of fatigue, boredom, and complacency. So what does that mean? That means that there's a large amount of data, terabytes and terabytes of data that really goes, goes unused and uninterpreted. So imagine if you had the ability to interpret this data in real time without breaking a bank for a whole army of camera analysts. You would then be able to better respond to a whole host of safety threats and building management issues, ranging from something exigent like gun threats and intruders to more recently managing social distancing guidelines and building density metrics. We can provide you with this capability by turning all of your existing security cameras into smart cameras with no additional hardware required. So our computer vision model samples frames from um, network optics and analyzes them to detect threats and analyze patterns of human interaction with a high degree of accuracy. We then are able to provide actionable intelligence either through real-time alerts for something such as a gun threat or intruder or feeds into uh, analytics dashboard. This information then enables security and facilities teams to respond to immediate threats or building management issues. So for example, in a gun threat incident, this information enables security teams to immediately trigger their defensive and evacuation protocols or if there's a person in an unauthorized area, you can immediately deploy a security guard to challenge a potential intruder. Um, you can also identify things like crowding issues during certain times and places within your building and rearrange furniture or redirect traffic or ask your occupants to use different entrances to really reduce the risk of community spread impacting business operations again. Sorry, I'm missing a slide here. Can you all see, still see a slideshow? Okay, here, sorry about that. Uh, no worries. Okay, so here are the three primary areas where Actuate can help deliver value for organization. 
at a high level actually detects immediate security threats and also analyzes how people interact with each other in your spaces and provides you with actionable data to provide, improve building management security processes. So let's actually start on a far right because that's probably the one area that's the most immediately relevant to uh, some of your end customers. So in any efforts to return to the workplace, companies should really plan for steps to screen, contain, and trace the virus. But screening is really hard because some studies have shown that 80% plus of SARS-CoV-2 carriers are asymptomatic. So um, yeah, screening is really challenging, but we can still contain and trace the virus. With our social distancing AI solution, you can now track areas of the building that are natural congregating spots where people are not practicing distancing. Um, in one of our existing customers, we actually found that the walls near the main entrance was where people often sat down and gathered and stopped to chat. So what the facilities team did was they put some reminder signs down, they put some physical barriers, so that people would actually remember to maintain their distance. In the instance of a confirmed case, let's say Jim from marketing begins having symptoms and tests positive, what we can actually do is immediately pull all the detective frames of prolonged gatherings within a specific time and location parameter. So you and a facilities team can identify everybody that Jim has touched, and you can also ask those employees to get tested and obviously isolate if necessary. Other capabilities we bring to the table include mass detection. So for example, if you can track that the marketing department is at 35% mass compliance and the IT department is at 80%, what HR can do is implement a leaderboard for mass compliance and encourage positive behavior. On the building management side, you'll also be able to generate a heat map of building density down to the square foot level of precision. And this can really help manage traffic flow and help you better understand where people are throughout the building. Uh, this can be especially useful in those staggered return to work plans that most organizations are thinking about right now. If you have the A team coming in Mondays and Wednesdays and the B team coming in Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, if you think about it, even if you have a building that's running at 50% capacity, you can be just as, just as much at risk um, if those 50% are generally still working in the same areas of the building. So this will help you better plan that out. Now, going to threat detection, this is actually a product that we initially started with, stemming back from our personal story and upbringing. Um, it's a solution that really identifies gun threats and intruders with an exceptionally high degree of accuracy. Um, intruder detection can be especially helpful to help reduce the number of hours spent monitoring security camera footage and walking pre-planned patrol routes. We actually have partners that we're working with that actively market themselves as a security guard replacement company. So uh, what this enables is incident-driven response by your security team so that it can be at the right place and the right time instead of trying to be everywhere and see everything at once. Uh, <clears throat> these real-time alerts can be delivered by SMS, email, through NX, uh, through the NX UI, and the people analytics metrics are provided through our actual analytics dashboard. So this is our analytics dashboard. Um, you, you'll be able to pull up the kind of people analytic detection me metric that you would like to look at, whether you're looking at people flow, uh, crowds, loitering, social distancing, or mass compliance. You can also filter back parameters such as date, time, camera location, and number of people. So for example, if you want to identify all crowds of more than five people from, let's say, June 1st to June 15th on a second floor of your building, you'll be able to do exactly that. We can also provide a density map down to square foot. You'll be able to see on our bottom right hand corner, uh, in this specific camera frame, people tend to co congregate and loiter on the right side of the entrance where there's a ledge to sit on, as I mentioned before, uh, after coming into building. So really building management is able to take measures to discourage them from doing so. And Ben will be able to give an actual real time demo after that, after this presentation. For our threat detection platform that requires real-time alerts, uh, namely intruder and gun detection, as mentioned before, the alerts will come through either as a mobile email alert or through NX. Uh, the real-time alerts arrive in less than one second, so you can immediately pull the detection frames of a gun threat or intruder along with their location of the camera. Um, for the end customers, if we get a copy of their floor plan, we can also work with their facility staff to map these cameras onto the floor plan and interactively track a threat throughout the building. So just to summarize real quick, here are some, and actually to go into a little bit more detail, um, here are some major applications of our technology. For gun detection, 
We can detect gun threats in real time with an extremely high degree of accuracy and a minimal false positive rate. Uh, we've, we've tested this and deployed this in several dozen customer deployments thus far, and we've never failed to identify the weapon within the first five seconds of it being drawn. And the false positive rate averages less than one per month per 20 cameras. Uh, with some of our oldest customers dating back to mid-2018, they've actually gone months at a time without getting false positives. And I'm talking about schools with 50 to 100 cameras during the school year with a high level of activity uh, with students and faculty all maneuvering throughout the hallways. And I'm not talking about uh, during the summer months or during this time uh, that there's nobody in the buildings because of the coronavirus pandemic. Intruder detection, as I alluded to before, really allows your guard forces security team to operate by what's called incident-driven response rather than just trying to see everything at once. Um, a good friend of mine is actually a senior executive at Allied Universal, and he, he said that his sales of guard services is up by 30% year over year. And in many cases, the total cost of hiring guard services to protect your facilities uh, throughout like seven days a week could easily exceed uh, $100,000 a year. So instead of trying to see everything at once, and again, walking these pre-planned, pre-time patrol routes, Guards can respond to human activity where they're not supposed to be with a false positive rate that's really close to zero. Loitering um, is pretty straightforward. We can detect when people are in a camera frame for a protracted period of time, which can be used for both safety and security purposes. So just to give you an example, if you're a school administrator, basketball practice is over, and you have several students waiting outside. They haven't been picked up by parents for two hours after practice. You probably want to know so you can do something about it. Um, social distancing AI, we can provide your organization with uh, a social distancing metric that measures how frequently occupants are congregated in proximity for protracted periods. And how do you define protracted periods? It can be 30 seconds, one minute, however you want to define within the user interface. Crowd management. Um, so one problem that we had with a low income housing development that we deployed at for the past six months right now is that whenever they see large crowds form, it's usually for a bad reason. Usually there's uh, going to end up being a fight, there's gonna be an altercation of some sort, there's gonna be damage to a facility. So these are things that they want to know in real time so they can respond to it instead of something that they go back and um, you know, go and scrub the graffiti after, off the wall because somebody's done something, something there. So whenever there's a lot, large crowd, they want to be alerted to it and we can do that, do that for them. Uh, with retail and people flow analytics, you'll be able to track how people are flowing throughout your building. And this is actually especially useful in a re retail setting where you really want to know for a mall or shopping centers, um, for example, have a better understanding where footfall is so you can um, understand the value of specific storefronts and how they're positioned. And we can even, as mentioned before, since we analyze down to square foot level, <clears throat> even within these individual stores, you can understand which products um, and which shelves and which products customers are interacting with the most. So it can help drive a customer's product placement and marketing efforts. So our technology and computer vision um, expertise have actually been proven out in several dozen customer deployments. Uh, most of the customers that we're working with started off with our gun detection system, but a lot of them are increasingly adopting other types of capabilities as well, especially to uh, mitigate the risk of um, the coronavirus pandemic. So only several of them have agreed to be publicly referenceable, and that's why we have their logos here, but the others have also agreed to take private reference calls. So if of interest, we can actually put you in touch with them so they can provide their feedback. And as you can see, our customers range from schools and corporate headquarters to, as mentioned before, low-income housing and also the United States Army. Um, and that work is actually pretty interesting. And the work that we're doing with the Army Futures Command, we were contracted to develop uh, computer vision technology to automate munitions inventory and management. So the way you think about it is, instead of identifying weapons where they're not supposed to be, for example, in commercial real estate development or, or residential housing, we're actually helping the Army ensure that munitions are where they're supposed to be to improve inventory management and to, to really automate it so soldiers don't have to do as much work. Hey, Sonny, so uh, w just a question on that. So are you guys actually able to, to detect different models of guns or, uh, or, or is it more like the quantity that you're counting in that, in that particular use case for the, uh, the Army? Yeah, so, so for the Army, we're getting into a lot of granularity with specific yeah. types, but that's because we can control the way the camera picks them up. 
right. uh, in a production commercial deployment, really getting below pistol versus rifle versus shotgun isn't valuable. So that's the level of detail we provide to our customers. So, so the yeah. level, so, so in the, in the field, you can do pistol, rifle, shotgun, Basically. and then in a, in a controlled environment, you can get way more granular because you can train the neural network to look at like specific on training on specific training data sets, right? Yeah. And I, the only, that's correct. The only thing I'd add is it's not necessarily a controlled environment. It's just a controlled camera angle with most security cameras. You just can't get enough pixels per foot to differentiate different types of pistols, for example, whereas even in battleground conditions, we can have a soldier, you know, point the camera in the right direction. No, I hear what you're saying. I mean, when I say a controlled environment, I mean, like, as in like, you've got the specific camera angles, you got a specific yeah. pixel density, right? So exactly. You know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, you know, I spent about a decade in U.S. Marine Corps between enlisted and officer. And I think most people are going to have a hard time telling the difference between a Glock 17 and a Beretta M9. And um, that granularity of information is not necessarily something that um, security stakeholders and law enforcement have found valuable. They just need to know, hey, am I going up against somebody with a semi-automatic rifle or is it somebody yeah. with just a sidearm? Because that... Um, depends on like if the law enforcement officer needs to go in their trunk and actually fish out their rifle or they can't just go and respond immediately. Um, any other questions before I continue? No, I was just curious about that uh, level of granularity you got down to with the army stuff. Sounds good. Sounds good. So um, let's talk about technology real quick. Uh, our technology is actually exceptionally accurate because uh, of our unique tech stack. If you think about the performance of any computer vision model, it's really driven by uh, two primary factors, the data set and underlying algorithm. So the biggest driver of accuracy uh, really comes from the data set. So over the past two years, we've accumulated over half a million images of real life or replicated security camera scenes, initially from channels such as web scraping and staging our own. But more recently, especially over the past year and a half, we've increasingly sourced the lion's share of our training data from live customer deployments. Our, our AI algorithms are also unique. Uh, while we've incorporated aspects of open source models, such as YOLO v4, faster RCN, and single shot detector, what we did, uh, what our data science team did, was they took the best aspects of each of them and built them what's into what's called an ensemble model that's both highly efficient at detecting single classes of small objects, such as guns, and potentially larger objects and security camera feeds, such as human beings. And this really enables us to, to deliver world-class accuracy rates. Um, after all, a computer vision model is only functionally useful if the responding humans are not just getting desensitized from alerts due to getting false positives left and right. So as I alluded to before, we are a software-only solution. Implementation is really fast and easy, and in most instances has a very limited consumption on your organization's network bandwidth. Uh, the only thing that we need uh, for our solution to work is remote access into NX, which can take as little as 30 minutes of collaboration with the end user's IT department. Uh, <clears throat> there are no hardware installations required unless a customer just wants to install more security cameras for additional camera coverage. But what that means is that we can work with customers anywhere in the world, despite any pandemic lockdown restrictions that may be in place. Uh, the sample images will be analyzed in our cloud and detection alerts can be sent in real time through NX, through SMS, through email, and also, as mentioned before, we have our um, analytics dashboard. This slide specifically is just showing how you guys uh, integrate with network optics and powered by NX products, right? NX Witness VMS and other ones. Um, right. And so, so for you, you guys on the phone, it's just a server API integration with a with the generic events that are come in, and you're probably familiar with that already. Um, but the screenshot up there is just simulated from me in the office yesterday, you know, messing around. But you can see what a generic event's going to look like is going to be gun detected. And actually, what I did was I set up a rule that said if I get a if I get a generic event from a, a system um, that has the source of actuate AI and it has a gun detected. Um, and it has the uh, caption, then I want to open a layout and show that particular camera um, that, that, that the gun could potentially be detected in. And of course, I'm holding a Nerf gun there because I don't have a real gun. So, but, but um, this is basically what the integration is going to look like right now inside of NX Witness and other Powered by NX products, um, as you guys are probably familiar with out there. 
Sorry, go ahead, Sonny. Yeah, no worries. Uh, last slide coming up. So just to wrap things up, I um, want to briefly recap some of the benefits at a high level of adopting our solution. First of all, probably the most important thing is that it really helps to automate some of your security camera monitoring. So whether you have a SOC or security operations center or not, that what actually can do is help deliver real-time intelligence on threat situations and building management issues so you can make rapid decisions that protect life and property. It's also super cost-friendly. So a director of security at a Bay Area-based corporation actually laughed when I shared pricing with him because he said that we're a mag order of magnitude less expensive than any other proposal he has received. So we're able to do so because of our software-based approach. We're not selling any sensors, smart cameras, or GPU boxes. You already have security cameras. We just deploy cutting-edge AI software to make them smart. And one thing to note is, one last thing to note is that our technology is privacy conscious and non-intrusive. And uh, as mentioned before, that's the reason why we haven't developed facial recognition technology. It's a piece of feedback that we've heard time and time again from, from security and facilities leaders. They don't want their customers and employees and students to feel like they're entering into some fortified military compound or being watched the entire time. We discard all security camera frames other than positive detections every 24 hours. Even for a positive detection, we can snap to your organization's privacy policy. And for our people analytics and social distancing solutions, you might have seen a recent New York, New York Times article just came out about it. But a lot of organizations are, a lot of companies are selling wearables and, and very intrusive tracking apps on employees' mobile devices. And we sidestep all of that and just use your existing surveillance infrastructure to help track a lot of this activity to keep your organization safe. So with that said, uh, I will turn the demo over to our chief technology officer, Ben Geomech, and he will also answer Q&A because he understands technology better than anyone else in our company. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, Ben, I have a question before you begin. So this is 100% cloud-based, is that right? Yeah, currently this is 100% cloud-based. We do have some partners that we can put you in touch with if people demand an on-premise solution. But basically, for things like intruder detection, we can, we can do that for a few dollars per camera per month uh, because we only run the cameras that currently have motion. If you're going to install hardware to do that, as you know, you have to install hardware to have the peak amount of cameras. So as long as you're in a situation where you can connect your VMS to the internet, we'll be cheaper every single time. So when you said you can do it based off of motion, right? So you're basically pulling the, the stream all the time into the cloud? No, so we only pull the stream once the VMS has detected motion. So we rely okay. on, the, on the witness VMS as our edge compute device, which is how we don't have to install okay. any hardware or software of any kind. So, how so we you let you make them. Are you using webhooks or? Uh, so I believe we're, we're using elements of the server API. I'll have to check with my engineering team to understand specifically what function we're using. But we've okay. had a lot of success with uh, running this sort of edge style deployment on works with NX devices. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Okay. Go ahead. Awesome. So let me just make sure I have control here. Great. I'll stop here. And so we already showed you some examples of what the alerts will look like within the VMS platform. And for things like intruder detection, gun detection, that's primarily how our customers receive it. We push an alert to the VMS and then you can use all of your existing security workflows, including integrations with other security assets like um, access management tools through the VMS using that as your main command center. But what we've found as we've expanded into additional use cases such as social distancing, crowd detection, occupancy tracking, people flow, is that there's not a lot of situations in which it makes sense to get an urgent alert about those things happening. Using social distancing, for example, um, our system is very sensitive and can actually detect um, the moment two people get within six feet of each other. And that's just going to happen. You don't want to get an alert to your SOC every time two people pass each other in the hallway. And so what we've built to enable more granular exploration of this data is what I'm showing you right now. This is the Actuate Analytics UI. It allows you to dig into data and identify key trends and output heat maps down to the square foot, showing you where things are happening in your building. So this is an extremely powerful extension of our, of our AI platform that goes beyond instantaneous alerts to tracking trend management and building management over time. 
Now, before I dig in and show you the workflows here, just one quick note is uh, this is a new product. So what I'm showing you right now is the previous version. We're going to be coming out with a new version over the next few weeks that will have the same powerful analytics, but will be a lot faster and easier to use. So there will be a little bit of a loading time here just because this is a, an early version of our product. So what we're, sh what we're seeing here is a demo user interface for one of our customers. So you'll log in on our website and you'll have a user account specifically for your entire organization, or if you want a specific person or a specific building to have their own login that limits um, data access, we can provide that as well. And then this will open up directly into the analytics system. And all of the data that Sunny mentioned during the presentation is available here. Crowd, loitering, people flow, social distancing. Uh, we can also put gun detection and intruder detection in there, but we hope you don't have enough gun detection incidents where you need to um, <laughs> identify trends important. over time. Yeah, exactly. That would be a little problematic. Um, and basically what this does is it shows you across all of your cameras, how many social distancing issues or crowd issues or whatever have you had? And if you pay attention here on the lower right, this information gets extremely granular. So what we're showing right now are social distancing issues with between two and 10 people that were within six feet of each other for between 30 and 120 seconds. And a lot of these are pretty casual, so you can automatically adjust it. And you'll see now for only looking for pretty extensive social distancing violations of more than 80 seconds, we just cut down on the amount of information here. Um, this is super powerful from a social distancing perspective. As Sunny mentioned, you can use this type of search to do contact tracing without collecting individualized location data, which I know a lot of organizations have privacy issues with. But also on the crowd detection side, we've seen customers express a lot of interest in using this for uh, crime mitigation. Because if you know there was a crowd of, say, eight people seen on your property, you can specifically look for crowds of eight people, and they'll sh be able to track that across the facility without relying on things like facial recognition, which can be very expensive unreliable, but most importantly, raise huge compliance and privacy issues for a lot of organizations. So to go deeper into the workflow, now you can see we're specifically looking for pretty egregious social distancing violations here. Luckily, over the past uh, few days, we've only seen four of these. And we can see most of them were on the 22nd, and most of them were in the lobby to vestibule camera. So we could go through and actually pull up the video for these specific um, instances. But, and while for four violations, that might be interesting, the question we often get from our customers is, okay, what am I gonna do with this? Like if I recognize somebody who has social distancing problems consistently, I'll go talk to them, but that's not something that most organizations wanna do. So what we've built is a system to allow you to bubble up this data and really make intelligent management decisions about your facility. So once we go into one camera where there's a particular amount of issues, say the lobby to vestibule one, we can generate a heat map. And with these really strict filters, that's not very interesting. It's just two points. But then if we pull in all of the data that we saw before, which, uh, yeah, sorry, this is the demo version. So just pulling back up the right information. There we go. You'll see that we can actually show you exactly where these problems are occurring. And we know this specific demo data that we're pulling from. It's uh, a w one demo camera that we have set up. And so while most of these social distancing violations are coming from the elevators here in this vestibule, which you would expect and isn't really a problem, we consistently see an issue here on the left side of the room where people are sitting on the little ledge here in front of the window. And so what this customers have been able to do is station guards there, make sure that people know that this isn't a safe place to be uh, congregating and position hand sanitizer, et cetera. Basically adapt to the needs of your building occupants without having to do laborious interviews and without having to guess. We give you all that data in a really easy to consume format. On the flip side here, um, going back to normal times, we've actually had a lot of interest from uh, people who want individuals to congregate in a certain area. So if you know, for example, at your store that there's an area where people are congregating, you can pre-position product, pre-position staff in that location uh, to make the most of what, of what your customers are already doing. And we can do that and provide you numbers using your existing security cameras. So you don't have to purchase additional hardware like you do with a lot of existing occupancy trackers. So this same feature set exists for crowd detection, exists for loitering detection with very similar data points. 
But the one last one that really adds a lot of power here is the people flow. So this is the part that we're going to be building out the most in the next version. But the key thing here is we can show you given occupancy of uh, how many people are in your space at any given time. Because this is a hallway where people are walking through, it's only about one person at any given time. Uh, we can also give you a total people count of how many people pass through this facility on a given day. And we know that the number of people that are in each of these buildings and would be passing through the lobby of every given day. And these numbers actually align very accurately with what we would expect there. So we can provide people counting, let you know how many people are accessing a space, again, using your existing security cameras. But we go a step beyond that as well. So if we go into the dashboard over here and select a camera again, uh, you'll see that we can actually produce a heat map, which is now pulling a ton of data to show you where people are moving in your facility. Again, you see that most of the activity is coming in and out of the door to the elevators, exactly what you expect, not really providing a lot of information. But as we showed before, we can pinpoint exactly where people are loitering, where people are spending time. So around these ledges over here, we also see a lot of people leaning up against this wall to show you how people are using your space. Uh, we have a lot of interest from organizations like large skyscrapers, large malls, who want to understand how people who aren't necessarily going through turnstiles are using their lobbies. And we can provide all this information without hiring additional staff, without installing additional technology, and give you these very granular pieces of information about the way people utilize your facilities using your existing NX VMS and your existing security camera deployment. So ben, just I have to wrap up. Yeah, go for it. Um, for the heat map that you're generating, right? Mm -hmm. um, how would this be different than like a, a, a motion-based camera heat map that you get a lot of times, like IP cameras? Yeah, that's a great question. So inside of a building, they're fairly comparable. I mean, you will get error on a motion-based heat map. Um, if there's a vehicle that goes past or somebody's moving merchandise, for example. But outside, those heat maps can be very difficult to work with, especially if there's wind, if there's changing light conditions. I ha we haven't really seen customers be able to get performance out of heat maps in any situation that involves natural light yeah, where I they mean, really felt it was valuable. And well, so here's, this, here's, cuts here's out what all I'm of seeing, that. right? Yeah. Is that um, if you see a camera like this with a heat map, right, what you'll mm -hmm. see is you can maybe make out that pattern um, mm -hmm. if you really look hard, but there's going to be lots of different colors because a lot of different people have walked through here, right? Yeah. And you're probably going to get a stripe right down the middle of the camera that's going to be really, um, you know, right, right where that walkway is. Yeah. That's really going to be uh, highlighted as well. So when I look at your heat map, what I see is something fundamentally different, Yeah. Uh, which is that it's giving me spots where people are... Um, just stopping and, and loitering, right? Mm -hmm. and so as a result, I can make out, like you were saying, like every, and it makes total sense. Yeah. Everybody's hanging out along the walls, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, throughout the day. <clears throat> and so like you're saying, um, putting up signs or even having a guard go check the area once in a while makes a lot of sense. Um, so that is, this is based off of people that are detected, right? Correct. As in like, it, and, and with a normal camera uh, heat map, it doesn't care what it is. It's looking at motion. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And uh, the other layer on top of that is we provide numbers to all of these. So yeah. the next release is going to also have a floor plan view where it'll actually show you based on where your cameras are across your facility, where certain types of activities are and give you specific counts of, oh, there were 30 people in this room. And then you click into that and you can see exactly how those 30 people move through that space in that given amount of time. So this is just a lot more accurate and a lot more granular than any motion detection based approach. You can generate this. Sorry, when you go back to the previous one where you had the ability to kind of like uh, adjust the sliders. The yeah. size of the crowd that you're looking at and everything you can regenerate this heat map based off the number of people present the length uh, that they've been dwelling right is that right so yeah, when you absolutely. Change, when you change these numbers that heat map is modified Right. Yeah, completely. And that's why you're seeing this be a little slow, because this was the first version of it. And we're oh, now man. optimizing it so you can get instantaneous heat maps. Uh, like if you want to know only where families are, you can say between two and five people, where are families moving in my building, for example. And this will yeah. automatically regenerate that information. Don't worry about that. You guys are two and a half years in, I think Sonny said, right? <laughs> um, 
we have high we have high before. standards for our own uh, <laughs> user experience. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, but you should have seen the first version. Of, you should have seen the first version of our product that came out. I mean, it was cool. Like like the drag and drop stuff was all present. The the, the, the core of what we became uh, or what we are today was there, but. You know, two and a half years in, this isn't anything to stump. <laughs> yeah, and and, and the only the other mapping itself is really yeah. yeah, and the only other thing we'll add is we're in the next version, we're taking a new top down based approach where once you log into this, you're given high level analytics of like the yeah. level of crowds, the level of social distancing that's happening across your whole facility that you can use for executive presentations, you can make public as a um, an overall indicator of how well your organization is doing social distancing and then dig into how is it happening across my building and then in a specific room how is this happening on a per square foot level so you can get this level of analytics from your entire organization down to a specific spot on the ground that's our vision and that's where we're going to be next month <laughs> yeah and this interface as well just for you guys that are on the call uh, this interface can be pulled into the uh, into it into an NX desktop client right with the embedded browser and 4.1 yeah. is the it's coming out pretty soon. There's a there's a whole new um, updated Chromium browser that's been embedded, and the performance is really good. So, yeah, you could basically pull this information and sit it right next to the cameras that you're looking at as well. So absolutely, cool. Sorry, go ahead. No, so that's all the key features here. Um, as we noted, uh, the best practice with this technology is things that are urgent, things that you want your customers to, or, or your, your security team to react to immediately, or things that you want to pipe through the rest of your security systems should be pushed directly into the VMS. And everything else that's much more of a trend, more of an understanding element, things that you might be using people counting technology for, people tracking software or hardware for, can all be done in this UI. So. There are really two halves of the same coin right now, but as you mentioned, in the next version, you're going to be able to use them within the VMS experience itself. Yeah, how would you set up an, uh, an alert? Uh, what do you mean specifically there? Uh, so sending an, uh, sending an SMS, sending an email, or um, sending a generic event back to like powered by an X system. Like yeah, so it, that really depends on the customer's preference. So we can do okay. all of the above for an SMS or an email. We have our own instant UI so that oh. you don't have to have the mobile app on your device. Uh, if, if all your security team does have a mobile app on your device, we recommend pushing it into that because that's a much more seamless experience. Uh, but what we find is a lot of our customers that use Powered by NX products actually only use the VMS as a recorder. And so we built the SMS functionality primarily for them so they can get alerts even when they don't have a super sophisticated uh, security system. Okay, so the, so the customers you've interacted with so far are not using the mobile application for whichever Powered by NX product they have, right? Well, we have both. Yeah, so when you're using the mobile application, we recommend just using the mobile application. That way you get full integration with all of your other security applications and processes. Uh, a lot of our customers don't do that, especially if an executive, for example, wants to get gun alerts. They probably don't also want to install all of the rest of their security suite. And so we would specifically send SMSs to those stakeholders. Got you. Um, I did have one question about the, the gun alerts. So I think on the slide it said uh, brandished weapons. Yeah. So if if uh, if I'm just care if I'm just carrying a weapon, is that I mean, what is brandished for you guys? Is it like in my hands, or so that's a great question. Um, fundamentally, we can detect any weapon at all. The uh -huh. the trade off is how many false positives are you going to get. So right. our our technology is better than a trained professional at identifying weapons and security footage. But if a weapon is in a holster, it's hard to tell the difference between that and somebody with a phone holster. Similarly, yeah. if a weapon is partially concealed in somebody's pants, we can flag that for you. But you might also get other things that are tucked into people's pants. So the numbers that Sunny shared, where we're getting less than one false positive per 20 cameras per month, are gun in hand situations. They yeah. don't necessarily have to be pointed at somebody, but that's somebody holding a weapon. Yeah. Um, that's our ideal because we can provide a very, very clean experience with super high accuracy and almost no false positives. But if you also want partially concealed weapons, we can do that. You're just going to have to be prepared for a slightly higher level of false positives. Sure. But I mean, that's a, the way they explain that to me is a neural network is, is just like a human brain, right? Exactly. And that it's going to make mistakes uh, just like humans make mistakes when it comes to like, is that a weapon or not? Right. 
Yeah, it, uh, but it doesn't get tired. It doesn't get bored. It's like yeah. your best security operator working at peak performance on one camera stream, except all the time and on all your camera streams. Right. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a, a guy who's really good at looking for guns. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And if you think about it from a threat management perspective, um, somebody with a holstered weapon, uh, an active shooter, for example, is not going to walk in with a holstered sidearm, right? It's really going to be a security guard, a law enforcement officer, somebody in an official capacity. Uh, but if you have a weapon in your hand, that means that you're either about to commit a crime or you're about to commit an act of self-defense. In each of those situations, you probably want security and eventually law enforcement to know as soon as possible and give them that real-time information. So that's why we actually focus on gun in hand um, because in most 99% of situations, a holstered weapon is not going to be a threat. Makes sense. Um, yeah, that was my last question. Now, I know we got a small crowd today, but if anybody's got any questions out there, feel free to jump in. And if not, that's fine. Awesome. <laughs> Well, um, did you guys want to go over anything else or is that pretty much it? So I think that's everything. The only last thing that we'd like to mention is that we are currently bringing on uh, integrators and resellers for this product. And we can offer competitive um, margins with extremely strong white glove service. Uh, this tends to be a product that's installed in fairly large uh, completely recurring contracts. So if you think that describes your customer base, we would love to hear from you. Yeah, I mean, one question for you guys is what uh, what do you find more interesting for you, for your company? Is it is it more the gun uh, detection side of stuff? Is it more the people analytics? Or is it, you know, <coughs> equal? I will say that more recently, um, it's been a people analytics piece, just mm -hmm. because um, one thing that Ben talks about all the time is that, yeah, the reason why there's declining interest and gun detection is because people aren't in their facilities right now for the most part, even right. with the city gradually starting to reopen. Um, but one thing they are thinking about is how can we reopen safely? How can right. we minimize uh, the risk of community spread and getting our business operations disrupted again after we reopen? So every single organization on in the country is thinking about that right now. And we provide a tool to help enable them to make data-driven decisions to minimize that risk. Gun detection, there's still some interest, but that's really for organizations that are taking a more of a medium to long-term view. Uh, or in, in one instance of an insurance company that we're actively working with and uh, are now about to submit our contract is they said that they just want the whole thing. They, they said, hey, it's cheap enough. We're just going to deploy gun detection because we've already piloted and tested it. It works well. And we also want the whole people analytics uh, thing to help us mitigate our COVID risk. So, um, so yeah, I'd say... <laughs> People analytics trending up because of what's going on in the world, but gun detection um, is still super relevant just for organizations with a more medium term and beyond view. Makes sense. I mean, what do you guys think in, in terms of long term for cloud versus on prem solutions? I know, like, a lot of right now, the majority of customers are still, you know, at least in my experience, still more comfortable with on prem solutions um, because they have this, you know, I won't call it irrational, but they have a, a fear of putting sensitive data into the cloud, right? Uh, which is completely understandable. Um, but I mean, do you guys uh, hear that? Uh, or, or is it more of a, um, or, or are you guys looking at the on-prem solutions at all? Yeah, so uh, this is definitely something we hear. I think the nutshell for us is that customers who are forward thinking enough to want to deploy this type of analytics tend to be much more open-minded with regard to deployment types. Uh, given that the people that come to us and are serious about AI, the only ones where cloud isn't, a, isn't something they're excited about are situations where they run a large number of retail outlets that have poor connectivity. So then it really isn't a policy problem, it's a technology problem. And as I mentioned, we worked with partners that can deploy our gun detection in any facility of course, if you have multi-thousand off by multi-tens of thousand dollars worth of hardware in that facility. And what we've seen a lot more recently is customers who only want cloud. So we're actually seeing the, the tide start to move quite, quite extremely over the last few months. 
Yeah, and IPVM just came out with an article um, a couple of weeks ago where they predicted, and you know, I don't, I don't know whether this prediction is accurate or not, but they predicted that over the next 15 years, every single video management system that's competing in the mainstream will move to the cloud. And uh, there's some evidence to support that given how much traction companies like Verkata have picked up I mean, they're, they're but, the yeah, but, but, but we don't want to necessarily uh, talk about your competitors on, on, yeah, on yeah, your yeah, webinar, but, uh, but uh, well, that's one of the yeah, benefits of our you know, approach. <laughs> hey, in the, in the short term, I mean, we were on, we had, we were on IPVM's VSAS show yesterday. Yeah. Right? Great. Um, awesome. So, you know, video software as a service and cloud-based uh, software <clears throat> is, is going to happen. Right. Yes. Um, now in terms of what form it takes, Right. Um, that's where the question comes in. Um, yeah. Because right now for, um, you know, on-prem video based solutions, in reality, video belongs as close as possible to the operator. Right. Um, it's yeah. the camera itself. Um, these straight to cloud solutions, uh, I think um, uh, Eagle Eye presented right before us. And they, they actually have, most of these solutions that claim that they're, they're on cloud solutions actually have bridge devices that have to be on-prem. And so what really makes them a cloud-based service then is just, they say that it's cloud-based service, right? And in reality, if you, if you have a bridge device locally and you're recording locally and then you're sending some clips to cloud, sure, that's a, that's a cloud-based uh, solution plus an mm -hmm. on-prem, which is exactly what we are, right? It's a hybrid. Yeah. Um, and right now, the hybrid model really speak, really, really solves the most problems um, and, and does it the easiest. Um, and, the, you know, I've been in this industry since like 2002. Um, mm. So I worked on some very large security projects and I lived in Shanghai, Asia for about 15 years where video was like king, right? Um, so, you know, the, the straight to cloud stuff is definitely... Um, interesting but right now the primary problem with it is the stability and the connectivity between your local um your local site and the, the cloud service that you're using right and unfortunately nobody can control their isp um <laughs> and what happens to their connection um and so that in the in the short term at least the um straight to cloud recording solutions really top out between one and eight cameras depending on how many, how much your bandwidth is, right? Uh, not to mention, you're also piggybacking on top of most likely your existing internet uh, connection for the rest of your company. So you're basically doing a lot of damage potentially to, to your, your, your active internet connection if you don't set it up right, right? Unless the IP or the IT department gets involved. And most of the time, people don't want the IT department involved in security surveillance solutions. So it's kind of a mixed bag, right? Um, when IPVM says that most things are going to be cloud-based, um, I think what they mean is that uh, any VMS or video product is going to have to have a cloud component in terms of yeah. whether it's a pure cloud play or not. Um, yeah. I think that's yet to be determined. I think that you're going to see, this is just me personally speaking, right? I think that you're going to see a more of a swing back to the other direction. I think you're going to see, see stuff becoming more private. Like you said earlier, Sonny, about privacy concerns, mm -hmm. face recognition, right? There's legislation, yeah. um, there's draft legislation in place for the European Union um, for facial, uh, limiting facial recognition um, AI, and, and it makes perfect sense, right? Um, but, uh, so what we're doing is looking at how do we add um, ability via the metadata SDK to allow you to do obfuscation of people and their faces and anything, any personally identifying information. And that way you give the customer the ability to make the choice. Are yeah. you going to respect people's privacy? Um, and are you going to, are you going to um, have a process for um, uh, doxing that person? <laughs> right? Or are you going to, are you going to just go with the, um, we will, we want to identify everybody that comes in. Right. And it's a sticky topic because there's value in both of those. Right. There's tremendous yep. value in knowing who uh, is at your retail shop and what they like to buy. And it's not just one way value, right. It's not tremendous value. Just the, the, the company that's selling the uh, selling their product. There's also value for the customer because if you're a VIP customer, they can recognize you and you can get exactly what you want and get out of there really quickly. Right. <laughs> so, and you can build points and you can, and you can have a relationship with that company. Right. But then on the other side, that can be abused. Right. So it's just a balance, you know? Um, 
and I'm not I'm not saying you need to go on prem uh, or you don't, right? I was just curious about what your plans were in terms of um, where do you guys see that um, going uh, moving forward, but given the fact that you're doing really uh, analytics and your and the way that you guys have presented the information is here's a dashboard with all the data that we're collecting. Um, that's just in line with the way that we think about analytics as a whole, because the video itself isn't so important at the end of the day, especially when you're doing uh, analytics information and you're looking at uh, trends and you're looking at yeah. customers. Like yeah, that, right? and, and one important thing to add there and something that's been a real big focus for our company recently is that that approach where you divorce the analytics from the raw footage also allows you to manage your security system in a way that's much more privacy compliant and avoids mm -hmm. bias because you don't have to look at the person. You can just say, right. what have people done en masse? And we feel like that's really well aligned with a lot of the concerns that, that we are working through and society is working through currently. So we, we encourage all possible video analytics customers to ask their vendors what their bias and privacy policies are because it's something that's becoming really important. Yeah, it's, it's, it's across the board, right? In Google Analytics, I can look at the number of people that come to our site, uh, what their general demographics are, right? But I don't know the individual, <laughs> right? But there's still tremendous value in knowing the type of people that come to the site, right? Um, but like you said, it's divorced from uh, specifically uh, personally identifying information. So I get the value of the data um, but I don't uh, expose these people to um, problems with a, like a potential abuse situations, right? right? With their with their personal identification. So, all right, I think that's about it. So, um, to contact you guys, I just pulled up your website. So, if the guys on the call want to um, get a quote from you, or if anybody watching this video later on wants to get in contact. <laughs> Uh, is this the best way to get in contact with you guys? Yeah, definitely. You can fill out the get started yeah. form or send us a note at info at actuate.ai or directly to either of us at ben at actuate.ai or sunny. So whatever way works best for you. And we have a, there's a direct phone number on this website too. So feel free to give us a call. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for your time this morning. And for those thank of you, you that so don't much. know, um, thank you for the yeah, no problem, Sonny. I look forward to seeing uh, you guys continue to uh, um, develop and evolve your product. I'm sure it's going to get more and more interesting as you go along. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you for the opportunity again. Thanks. No problem. Be in touch soon, guys. And for everybody uh, on the call, thank you very much for your time. And this has been another Work for the Next webinar. Uh, check out Actuate AI. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.